Okay, cool. Okay, so the first thing that I want you guys to do is like think about your comp <laughs> and what your goal of your comp is. Because right now, uh, you guys basically aren't playing to your win condition of your comp, and like I don't actually know if you guys you guys understand the comp differences. Because uh, this is like really important, understanding what the difference is between your comp and their comp. I don't know if you have prior scouting on these guys, if they play like ball comp a lot or whatever. Uh, did you guys have like prior scouting on them? No, we had like no prior scouting. Okay, okay. Then like whatever comp you start, all you need to do is like understand the win condition of your comp versus their comp, whatever they're running. And you should be relatively prepared. Um, so now you know for next time, like I'm guessing most of the top teams in Collegiate or, okay, I'm actually not sure. I, I shouldn't say this. But the, the best comp on this map is for sure some ball, Zen comp. And, like, if you are expecting uh, Lucio Moira, then yeah, you can run, like, D.Va. But in general, Sigma is better if you're planning on playing against the mirror. This is what I call, like, a hedge pick. If you pick D.Va, you should be... That means that I'm expecting some, like, brawl stuff and I don't want to get run over on Sigma. Or I'm expecting... uh some like dive stuff, some like rush stuff, and I want to be able to peel my Zen, be more mobile, be more independent as D.Va. So I don't know if that went into your guys' minds when choosing this, but I kind of expect this from like any player, Grandmaster and above to understand like, you know, this hero is good against this comp, this hero is good against this comp. Is this something that you guys planned or no? We kind of hedged against the six man here. We thought that most teams we versed usually bring out the six man here, so we hedged with the D.Va, but... Okay. I mean, we ran into the Sig Ball, we should have rotated off it. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I, I think the matchup yeah, is winnable. It's not ideal, but you have to find a way to win, because you can't choose what comp they load out on, and you have to just choose something that you load out on, right? Like, there's no... It's just a fucking guessing game if there's no scouting. Um, yeah. So, Five. what is what is the difference between your guys' comp? This guy's going to switch uh, Tracer. What is the difference in your guys' comp? And what does that mean for yeah. you stylistically? Uh, to me, the biggest thing here is that they have a lot more control with the backline unit, I think, right? Mm -hmm. That's the first thing that comes to my mind looking at this. So we, if we're looking for point presence, for example, we look between those, yeah, so Sigma and Diva, and we're cycling between Diva, Ball, and Tracer, whereas they can actually take presence with Sigma. Yes. And it doesn't have to be on point, but yeah. Very simply, like Sigma holds space in the wide open way better. What what is Diva better at? Because with every advantage, there is a disadvantage. That is, it's like a common thing in sports. What is your comparative advantage on your comp? You have this weakness, which is like don't fight out in the open because Sigma holds space better in the open. Diva does no damage from long range. What is your advantage? I would say that like because Diva has Diva has like her boosts and and matrix, like she can like contest space a lot much, much better i guess like she can like go around the map more Ability. and also like, she can also like be everywhere in the way in a sense okay she can um, be everywhere that's good one Mo mobility basically okay what's another thing i can't spell she can just straight up dive <laughs> she does more damage up close like because she has shotguns for her pew 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 she has shotguns for a thing she's actually the win condition of your comp is to use your mobility to get the side space because the Sigma can't move, you know, like she can't take the same space as D.Va. And then the other condition is from that side space, you actually want to dive. You you don't do any damage from range. If like, I, I know how bad it feels to play D.Va into a spam comp and your team isn't diving. You're just standing out in the open doing zero damage. You're like, oh, yep, I'm matrixing. Oh, I'm out of matrix in like two seconds. And then they're still just wailing on you. So what you guys actually need to do is connect. You guys need to connect as quickly as possible and close the distance. Four. Three, on this map too, two, again, maybe you're expecting one. Rush, but I'm pretty sure you can go this side Round most of the one. time unless they're Rhine. And if you see that they're Rhine, you should rotate off. But I would almost always go right side if I have a Zen comp. Uh, or sorry, Dojo side. But as soon as you guys see that they have a Sigma, this is where you need to cut LOS. You guys are now running away. You guys should have already, already from here, Ladiva needs to be on the wall and you guys need to be choking them in and then looking for a dive inside. It's hard to look for a dive inside, which is why I said, you know, uh, I'd rather just fight on this inside space. My diva can just whoo, fly through the window, dive from the back line. But you guys already like don't understand the the point of your comp uh, or the differences in your comp. So here, 
we need to get closer we need to get closer and we need to start choking them and start looking for dive my ball tracer should already be behind them uh in general in this comp like something really basic like i think your ball is good and your tracer are good individually but something really important in this uh in this matchup together is that your ball and tracer take the same side together because imagine if their ball and tracer run into your solo ball what's going to happen that ball just gets kicked out because he's 2v1 and then maybe the tracer's free on this side but it's fine like you know, uh, they, they just kick this guy out and then they take this side. So, in general, you guys want to be together. And then, in general, right now, the, the big idea, you guys should be already, like, as soon as I see the Sigma, I'm already thinking in my head, I need to cut the distance. I need to cut the distance. And we need to look for, like, cut LOSs because, you know, their backline is stronger. Like someone said, their backline is stronger. They can stand with Sig a little bit. But we need a LOS. We need a LOS. But here, their, their ball tracer on the same side. Really good from them. Uh, my soldier's off angling. This is good. But, like, look at how much space they control right now. You guys just went from here and then just stood here. Regrouped together uh, on this comp. And then they have this entire side of the map. The only person that's contesting the side space are, like, these two. But, like, this is not... Uh, I, I always talk about space in terms of a, a circle. This map is perfectly circular as far as I'm concerned. Perfectly circular. You guys already are in this quadrant. This is how much space you're holding. Oh. This is how much space you're holding. This is how much space they're holding. And from these sides, what they can do is just set up dives, right? That's the whole reason that you get the sides in this comp is because they can set up the dives from here. And then they you have to look at like five diff three different directions, which is really bad. So already here, you guys have like, you guys aren't playing wider than them because you don't have the comp to do it. If you had Sigma, maybe you could just like, you know, take their side, flip the map, it's fine. But you guys already, like, failed to do your purpose, basically, in this first fight. And there's nothing wrong with what the Tracer's doing. If, like, the feedback was, like, oh, Tracer, don't get picked, it's, like, that's silly feedback because, um, like, you guys as a team needed to, like, you know, do, do have a better plan together. So I hate when people say, like, don't get picked and stuff. I've heard it in VODs and stuff. Not saying you guys are. Just note that, like, almost everything in Overwatch is because, like, you guys didn't have a good team plan, basically. Here, you guys can't see anything, you guys can't shoot anything, it's really hard. The ball made our soldier go back in, you guys are 5 stack. It's gonna be a 3 man dive every time, and then they just push together and kill you. Hopefully you guys see how, how all the, the side space, they control the entire map, and then you guys are dove in the little corner of the map. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. You guys go SIG, uh, I think better, you know. Uh, Oh, sorry. Another thing, if you guys are expecting uh, this comp, uh, you guys could just switch this to like a Widow or a Hanzo. I think Hanzo is technically the best. Soldier is fine too. It doesn't really matter as long as you don't pick McCree. Um, it's probably fine. Okay, here. They're already aggressively fighting you guys for the space. Uh, their ball tracer should be controlling this right side. And then your backline should probably be going this way. Because if you guys go this way, it's just like easy slams. And then their backline can see you the entire way. So uh, this is why I said on first fight, in general on this map, uh, backline going this way is better. Uh, but it's, it's not a 100% rule. If they're like hard contesting you, you don't have to. But every team, uh, I have to kind of just explain what Harrisburg is doing. Sorry, like a lot of this is going to be theory because the VOD's very short. But they're going to control this space and they're going to control this space. And then they're basically just trying to pressure you like this. Those guys will fall back. These guys will fall back if you push them out, but it's fine. They give up a little bit of space and they're, they're looking for redive. So here, you guys need to decide which space you're going for. For me, like, I want my ball tracer to go this side together with, like, orb and pack. We have better orb and pack angle from here. If we send our tracer here, our, our zen can see our tracer. Their zen, like, is questionable. Like, he would have to position for his tracer over here. So, like, already here, you guys should be looking for the side. Uh, cause if you guys, let's just watch when you guys group up together, uh, it's going to look like the same as first fight and I can just freeze phrase, freeze frame it from third person, but you guys six man go alley. Like you guys are a rush calm. You guys just try to fast dive, but they just collapse on you from the backside. This tracer should probably be on the backside, but it doesn't really matter. They just come from you on the backside, push together at the same time. Uh, and it's not that hard that you, you are here. They just, you know, collapse on you. Right here. Easiest slam of my life. I don't play ball and I can I can make this slam, you know? <laughs> yeah, 
I can totally see what you mean there. Yeah, even the soldier went on the off angle because like you guys aren't even fighting for any of the space, and you guys are just playing like uh, Lucio Moira rush, but you guys don't even have speed to like rush into them. Uh, you guys are all just stacked up together. This is something uh, I think your DPS like intuitively understand because like DPS are probably the best ones at intuitively understanding this, uh, just because they always take off angles and fights as skin scan players or whatever. But yeah. And then here, I'm pretty sure you guys just get spawn camp because these guys realize uh, they, they can just do whatever, <laughs> pretty much. I think. I'm pretty sure they just spawn camp. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're like, uh, yeah, they're pretty much just goofing around. Uh, like, it's not even bad to fight out here. If you look at the positions, it's not that bad, but it's not that good either. <laughs> they're just catching feeders because, uh, like, this McCree is feeding and stuff like that. Okay. Guessing this is over already. Okay, uh, I want to show you guys in like practice what it should look like. I drew a bunch of shit out, but um, it's probably easier to see with a good example rather than watch a bad example. Uh, like how how this should be played. So O2 is like at this time was probably like no joke, probably the second or th maybe third best second best ball team. I think it goes Shanghai O2 and then us for like ball versus ball teams they they practiced in a really good region uh and luckily we got to scrim them when we were in hawaii so these guys let's go it was a really good scrim i'm gonna mute but like okay so we we just like are playing this comp because we think it's flexible enough and then like we talked about it beforehand we think it's flexible enough we're on a more dive variation so we're not playing a middle comp you guys played a middle comp where uh you guys are neither dive nor poke uh you guys chose chose soldier and diva we chose sombra and diva because this is we're like a dive variant we'll just commit to the dive sombra is good enough on this map arguably you could just go sigma hanzo like they did and they're they're committed onto a comp you don't go middle comps unless you're like really unsure about what they're running and you're really afraid about what they're running uh does middle comp make sense sorry um yep yeah yeah, uh, sure. yeah basically just like don't like uh, try to like don't try to like generalize just specialize exactly can. yeah so like if we were playing brawl versus brawl i want sim may like that's my ideal brawl versus brawl comp right like i want to play sim may ryan diva but if i was playing against uh, a dive team i don't want to play sim versus dive that's that's brain dead i want to go play kree i want to play tracer or probably my dps picks you know uh that's where i would go and hedge but you kind of figure that out in a series just to be clear okay so here we realize we want to get all the space this is the best LOS that we can get, right? Like going through Dojo with our backline is best. We can cut the space and then we can like dive uh, the open side, the alley side is what we call it, but yeah. Oh my God, the VOD quality went to, I can't even see what's going on. Sorry, my computer's like a thousand years old. Uh, <laughs> so having Overwatch right. open, streaming, all this stuff is like impossible. Okay, so already like my team knows, like we've talked about it a hundred times, but like we already know we need to like cut in and we are looking for dive. Um, you guys probably can't hear my comms, but I, I can narrate for you. Muse is saying, can we go, can we go? Can we inting? We're literally saying, can we inting? Because we know we just have to go. Unlucky, Bird got, like, kicked out. And then just, you know, sometimes this shit happens. You know, like, <laughs> their tracer just one clips us. But you can tell we're trying to cut in. Even now, we're still, like, our win condition has to be to die. And we're still going, we're still going. So it sucks that our Zen Brig die first, because, like, otherwise we set up a pretty good fight. But, you know, Ball Zen Comp has a lot of skill in it. Like, you hit the headshot on Zen, you don't hit the headshot on Zen. And it's the difference of the fight. Okay, not that interesting. Or like interesting that we're we have to just play to our win condition. So we already were cutting in. Space switches to Sigma. I think good. Soft reset. These guys catch us feeding. They're gonna just all to kill us. It's not that interesting. It's a stagger fight that we clutch out. <laughs> Okay, here's their retake, and you're gonna watch how they they retake the space. Ball and Sombra are together because if Ball just runs around this way, he can just get hacked by uh, Sombra, Tracer, and Ball can just mark him. So he's always going with someone, so it makes it easier for him. Look, 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 look. Ooh, 
both of their flankers are over here. I don't know if you can see. Uh, both of their flankers are over here. The ball went deep that side. Obviously, ball can like roll past a lot of things, but like it's always better if you guys can pressure things together. It means this guy has less chance of getting hacked a lot of the time too, or just like random, you know, I don't know, random shit can just happen in this game. Where he gets kicked out, like he misses a roll or whatever. He goes a bit early. Uh, he goes early on the slam. Like his backline isn't ready because what you need to do also on this comp is make sure that your Zen sees the dive like as much as possible like sometimes it's impossible like sometimes your back line is just fighting their their front line and your front line's fighting their back line sometimes that happens but they had the timing here uh i i think he should have just gone forward maybe he felt like he had to go because we were finding him out i actually can't tell from the vod but yeah all this is uh is okay the next concept is like it's a numbers game uh, so the reason that you send like three this side, three v three or three v whatever on this side, you send three on this side. This this means this side is three. So they have to like play back and wait for their timing, right? Uh, as soon as ball goes behind and he gets people's attention, we call it getting someone's aggro, kind of like in PVE, like in World of Warcraft, you get a mob's aggro or something like that. That means mm -hmm. he's like one v whatever x. Let's say he's one v two behind them, right? That means we're five v four and that we need to fight. These are all just like hypothetical situations, but in your scrim, basically that's what you want to create in these uh in these uh situations every single time. And I'll I'll bring up that example later, but keep in mind what I mean by numbers game is exactly that. It's like what are your localized advantage? If if someone is 1v2ing on this side, that means we're 5v4 on this side. You guys should always be thinking about numbers in this game cuz this comp is so wide, this comp is so creative. You guys just need high high map awareness, high like awareness as individual players. You guys are 4.3, maybe just 4.2, I don't know what you guys are actually, but you guys should be able to like if you're really good players, keep track of the numbers and then that means my side is the the strong side. My side is the weak side. What does this mean for me? Oh, I need to push in. They they are all looking at my ball. What do I need to do? These guys all push in for Junbin. We're trolling, not killing that guy, so that's unlucky. <laughs> but we know the ball is kicked out, and then we're trying to go fast. Like, as soon as that guy's out, it's a 5v6. We are fast on this decision. Like, this is what it means to know numbers. This is what it means to know cooldowns. All that stuff. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna... Yeah, so you went... Sorry. You went yeah. so... In like 10 seconds, you went from like a numbers game into an immediate collapse once you had the map control. Exactly. Okay. Like, they were trying to get map control over on this side. Uh, we either contested it or we were like, uh, I'm actually not sure what happened on this side based on the Vaughn, but I'm guessing we were fighting it because uh, Kevster was fighting over here and then their two DPS came from this side. So I'm guessing we were fighting it, which is why their ball wanted to go fast. Um, because he was going to get kicked. Like, he's just losing HP slowly, so just go fast. But as soon as we realized that, they mistimed it. Their Zen was like way back here. They mistimed it so that their ball was over here. And then I was like, okay. Uh, and then my team is like, okay, just push, push, push. Because this ball has one HP. He rolled all the way around. That's a 5v6. He got kicked out. Go fast, go fast. We're 6v5. We're 6v5. Things need to happen like super, super fast in this comp. Uh, in general, like fastness is related to like how many opportunities you see. And opportunities you see is based on your skill. Um, like, you know, if I can go for this player or whatever. Okay. Yeah. You guys, like, again, you guys seem to have, like, no plans. From what I can tell on your... I watched another VOD of you guys where you, I ha had your voice comms. Like, your voice comms are good, like, mid-fight. But you guys have, like, actually, like, zero fucking planning, basically, uh, going into every fight. Uh, you guys have, like, these general plans, which is fine. But it's, like, literally, like, are we coming out left side? Like, uh, first fight in Koth is, like, the most important thing. Uh, you guys should know if you're coming out left side or if you're coming out right side. Um like with your back line together it's just like a really simple thing and like I'll, I'll explain this a bit later but from there you can make a plan like on busan uh sanctuary the drum map like i want my back line to go to the dojo side but if you guys have another plan to go the other side that's fine too i don't really care which plan you do like as long as you guys have a plan for it either side is fine on koth like yeah there are like geography differences but having a plan is better than having no plan <laughs> Uh, I, I'm like a firm believer in that. So here your supports are already split and your back lines already split. Again here, uh, it's Hanzo for this spot. Uh, on Sanctuary, you can choose to play Soldier, arguably. But I think it's almost always Hanzo uh, on this map. They pick Ash, which I think is acceptable. But I think it's Hanzo or it's Sombra. Uh, yeah, Soldier, Soldier is a dog shit hero, I think, a lot of the time. Uh, 
He's just worse than Sombra. Uh, and yeah. Anyways, so your front line's going here. Your back line's split. Here's your two backliners, and then here's your Zen. These guys actually are doing the wrong thing, in my opinion. Uh, and they're just four-man going this way. But, like, look, they were trying to fight the side space, and then they were like, literally, like, fuck that. Let's just go get the weak guys. Let's go get the weak guys right now. And you guys, thank God you guys took the side space, because from here you guys can actually kill their backline, kill something. You guys choose to kill the Sigma, which is fine. Whatever's free is free. But, like, you guys can kill the backline or kill whatever, because right now they're collapsing. They're collapsing, but that means you guys have more of the wide space. So I'd rather be in your position right now. And, in fact, I think you guys do win this fight. As long as you live the dive, and this dive is way easier to win if your Zen's on the right side. You block the slam damage, and, yeah. Uh, your break can, like, shield for your shit. I think you guys win because yeah soldiers just on an off angle this can be anything yeah doesn't really matter but like let's say you sent like two to this side and sent four over here that's fine too like what they did is fine as long as you make a reaction and like again ball tracer together your ball tracer are together to make that off angle but like once you see that then you fight for the side space it's always going to be like this you send some people this way you send some people this way they send some people this way they send some people this way you realize this is a 4v3 you realize this is a 3v2 and then you fight the 3v2 because it's like, oh, my soldier's on this side. My soldier can help fight against the ball ball tracer on their side. Their ash can't help. Their ash is over here. That means we abuse this 3v2. And then from this side, I have this side. They should be pushing in this side. So it should look like almost like a yin-yang type of thing. Like these guys should be pushing this side. You guys should be pushing this side. If if teams are good, you should never own 100%. You should never own a majority of the pie. They should always be fighting for the other side, or they should straight up just be fighting you for the sides itself. But here, you guys coincidentally, and I will say, like, coincidentally do this. Because uh, your soldier is on, like, what I think is the right angle if he's playing soldier. And they don't have a high enough pull to dive, basically. Very hard to dive in this call. Which is why you need to settle for positions first. Straight up diving. If your ball ever just straight up dives a, a Zen Zen Brig without you know your tracer helping or like setup, uh, oftentimes he just gets bashed and should die. Yeah. Uh, small thing. If you're Zen, try to get to like your best sightline as quickly as possible. And for me, it's a tiny room. For me, you shouldn't even path down here, but it's fine that you did. I just go back here. Um, but um, it, it's all fine. Like, this is just an so individual thing. I have a question for this bit. So once we took point, how would we stage for the next fight here? Yeah, that's a great question. W let me let me ask you guys that question. Well, what would you guys want to do? If, if you guys have point and you, like, 6 would them, let's say you 6 would them, right? Like, because this one, you guys just... Uh, it's kind of still like the fight's still happening and your Zen dies and then yeah. it keeps happening. But like, let's say you guys have all of this, right? Like they're all in spawn. They're all over here. No problem respawning. Let's say you guys were over here, like had the entire map. You guys can literally like ghost to over here. It doesn't matter. What are your guys ideal positions and why? I try and stage the fight like the first fight attempt to like, like try and have our, ba have our ball tracer collapse on their back line with a soldier on high ground again. Sorry, I was drinking water. So you wanna do you wanna like sit back? You wanna have your like Zen over here, your ball tracer? Yeah, over probably. Okay. Any other ideas? Okay. I think that's an okay answer. I don't like giving space. I think I don't really need to dive sometimes because like I want to hold the space more because they're coming out of these tiny chokes. There's only two places they come out of. Three if you really consider this, but it's not a real No, no, no. One. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I more so like start, start small, poke, and then like try and almost fall back into that. But I guess that's giving up space as well. So. Yeah, I, I don't really like, unless that, like I'm really afraid of an ultimate or something like that. Or, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am fighting these doors and I'm putting my ball tracer on this side. And people like go into ball form too much. You just shoot. I, I don't know if you guys ever tried to 1v1 a Hammond. Uh, who just shoots you. 
uh, Dante played ball like a lot on stream and he's just playing it like a fat tracer because his guns are OP like his he's just 600 HP <laughs> he can 1v1 every hero in the the entire game I'm pretty sure by himself like other than hog or something like that he can just hold the space over here with the tracer you guys just block this door with your uh I, I would put my like zen soldier up here you guys just shoot them in the hallway here no problem you can orb over here like uh as well from this angle yep yep you can orb here, orb the bridge, whatever. And you guys can just fight for this space. Uh, it's going to be hard to dive inside. Your ball would have to call for it. It's kind of hard to dive on the insides, but there are ways to do it. If you get this side, let's say like they six man go out this way. What I would do is just send my tracer ball this way. And then I'm slamming inside here, mining and just saying like fight, 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 fight. If they six yeah. man try to come out here, if they try to come out here, uh, similarly, I give them a little bit of space for their backline, but I'm just pressuring them out, pressuring them out. And that means if their backline's coming out this side, the coast side, then the ball tracer's coming out this side, so you guys kind of have to watch for it. But I'm holding the space pretty aggressively. Again, unless there's, like, a good reason not to. Like, they have, like, rally, and we don't have rally, like, uh, something like that. Then I'm doing the soft poke and then backing, like you said. But I'm pretty sure if we win first fight, I'm pretty sure if, like, alts are equal roughly in most situations hold the space aggressively just shoot them because they have the same comp as you they can't just like bomb rush you if they just bomb rush you uh yeah it should be kind of hard for them you should just be able to do what you did first fight they're all contained in one space right but yeah great question great question and hopefully that goes over what you would do for retake as well um it's kind of the same thing on both sides right like for retake you would you would need to send your ball tracer on one side and you would need to like maybe add more pressure to the ball tracer side maybe just like Toss him, give Zen Brig on that side and just like give him a bunch of packs. Um, here, are we still fighting? We're still fighting, right? This fight hasn't really ended. This, this happens in ball comp all the time, by the way. Like, fights will never end and you are just constantly fighting. So everything is always winnable. Because it's just a skill comp. Like, it has a lot of individual skill in it. Okay, this is uninteresting, I think. Or, like, nothing team. Just... Oh, is this what they go fast on you with bomb? Yeah, and then we get cleared out. Yeah, I think they're, like, half pulling, but... <laughs> uh, this is actually really good. So, they put so many on this side, it means this side's free. You guys kick out the ball. After you kick out the ball, what what's the numbers on this? 6v5, right? Yeah. Okay, this is our turn, our turn, our turn. They use they use abilities that you have to find your turn in this comp. Okay, now you have your turn. I'm going all the way around. I'm going all the way around this ball. I, I need to get this side from my team. And for my SIG, I need to get out I want to get out of this fucking choke. Uh, for my whole team, I, I do not want to be stuck on chokes on like any comp in the game. I really don't want to be stuck in chokes. We're like half half. Because we sit in the choke, our, our brig's going back and forth, like, indecisively. I would have just gone here, gone wide, rallied to get get space. Honestly, when you're in a choke, you have to use alts to get out. Uh, I would have sent my ball tracer on this side. And then, and then basically, it's a 50-50 fight, and then you fight from there. Uh, set up a plan with our visor, uh, something like that. Your ball looks for mines from this side, because this side is, like, the free side. Uh, their tracer even goes to contest the ball, because he's a smart player. So he's going to go do that. But yeah, instead you guys just stand in the corner still. Like, you guys are AFK in the corner. Uh, and again, you guys can see the side space coming into fruition here. Their their ball and their tracer just come from this side and fuck you. Yeah. So take a side together, take a side together, take a side together. Not together. Maybe with a tracer, you, you still die, but uh, time it too with your backline. Like, if your backline's here, you getting space is, I don't want to say worthless, but like, they just 1v6 you because our, our team is literally like, not just AFK, but they're like back here. So, like, when you gain space, time it with your uh, front backline. The front line always has to get space. Our ball tracer, uh, Sombra, will have to get space. Our, in this case, it's just ball tracer. Our ball tracer will have to get space. And our back line has to wait until our, our front line gets aggro. Then once our front line gets aggro, it's a 2v2 over here. Means it's a 4v4 over here. Which means we could, should just be able to just fight. Just fight. But here, like, you guys go in one by one. Not on the same side. Uh, and then our back line just got into a position. Like, 
these guys literally got into a position to start shooting them, like, just now. Like, they, they were unable to shoot or add pressure or anything, so you guys basically just 1v6 this side and 1v6 this side. Uh, a good example is, like, when you touch point on a comp, your backline is ready to do something when you touch point. You guys actually do a good job on Dorado. Um, I can show an example of that clip, but hopefully you guys understand. The this guy's beating on it. <laughs> you guys can muscle through together. You guys don't always have to take the side space. If you have good alts, you guys can like, whatever. Uh, pretty much an alt battle where, again, you guys are all standing in the same spot and they just have multiple angles on you. But mostly like an alt battle. Uh, let me explain the frontline thing because I, I think it's kind of important. Uh, Dorado. I'll just like give another example of this, but the concept is the exact same. You're touching card in this one. In the other one, maybe you're touching point so that your team can get aggro, uh, so that your backline can move in. But the the really hard thing about this comp is like Zen is very fragile. Uh, oh no, I wasn't here. It was when you guys were attacking. Ready. This first part. Ready. You guys actually go up the stairs so that your backline can go and fight things. Again, you guys like understand this intuitively just because you played ranked or whatever. But this is bad. One v. Hopefully you see 1v6, like, I don't really care if you get a 6-man slam, it's it's bad. Uh, yeah, I, I early committed. Yeah. Uh, I, I got an early call, and then I... They called a nope out, and I still followed through. That yeah. was entirely my bad. No worries, like, these are these mistakes are so obvious that it's like... Yeah, I, I'm sure, you know? But here, like, what I would do is... You guys eventually do this just naturally again. I think it's just because, yeah. But... They're calm. They don't really want to drop to low ground, because it's bad if you guys are just sitting above them so you should just push cart with your ball tracer maybe just your tracer with an orb uh while these guys pressure so if these guys go and drop on the tracer and go try to contest the tracer you guys would go ahead and push if these guys get pushed you guys go back really safe and then these guys push cart right it's just a push and pull numbers game is again what i like to call it but it's just a push and pull of localized advantages they're they're putting more pressure on cart these guys have more opportunity to pressure you know, it's a 6v6 game. Everything is equal in this game. Everything is fucking equal in this game. That's why I love this game. Everything is equal. You guys can play mirror comps. Even if you don't play mirror comps, there's a win condition to everything. I don't really care what comp you are. If you are Zarya, I would say the same. Uh, like Monkey Zarya, I would say do, you would do, do the exact same thing here. Again, yeah. Okay. Cool. Um... I'm trying to go over all the balls and stuff first, and then we can go over other stuff maybe later, like Arisa stuff. Because your guys' Arisa comp seems kind of weak. Uh, oh, okay. Again, like, let's say you wanted to play, like, a more dive version. I, I think the more dive... Oh my gosh. Oh, sorry guys. I was late, sorry. No problem. Uh... So, like, again, playing to your win condition, I, I don't know what everyone is running in Collegiate, because you guys said you guys were afraid of, like, Lucio Moira, which I could imagine is a very popular comp in Collegiate. Uh, is that right? Yeah, there's a lot of six-man. Yeah, a lot of six-man dives, yeah. So, like, maybe you run oh, this comp right. instead, right? Like, you run Diva Sombra so that you, your hitscan doesn't have to, like, get dove every single time. Uh, and then you're playing against this comp. Maybe they surprise you and play this comp randomly on this map, too. Again, you guys will have to find your win condition I have taught this a lot, and it's cut in, cut in, cut in, cut LOS, and look for dive. But, like, we also think that they're going this side. Because, uh, like, most teams, we think that they're a ball's end team, and we think that they should be going this side. So we're already cutting the distance from spawn. We're going bridge side because we think they're going bridge side. Just like uh, Harrisburg did, they went bridge side, right? Because Ash Sigma over here is, like, kind of good. Uh, so we even go this side. They don't go this side, hey, but what we do is we cut the map differently now. This is not the same map as you guys where we cut it like uh you guys cut it like this right or like this we have to cut it differently we have to cut the map like this this is what we want to do so we actually take the bridge side all the way through space already said like i'm under them i'm under them i'm looking for dive he doesn't want to take poke as diva this is his advantage as diva is his mobility and then that he can dive if sigma was down here he can't jump back up right if he's Arya, he can't jump back up oh god we took the side here 
Go, 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 go. Diva's just in the fucking cut. You see this guy just machine gunning this guy down. Because that's our advantage in this comp. Our Zen Brig even went closer for the dive. Like, we're, we're all trying to dive together. We originally were bridge, so you can tell, like, Skewed was running up from this side. And then our Zen is even getting closer, closer, closer. We're, we, we're like, committed to the difference in our comp. Yeah. If you just look at the differences in any comp, it should be very clear. And this is just like an Overwatch principle, in my opinion. If I could ask a question real quick, who calls the um, who calls the dive shots? Like, is it the ball or the DPS or uh, Diva? It sh it should be all of them. Uh, Zen can call dives in this comp. Every everyone can call dives in this comp. Uh, the ball actually, I want ball to call dives less, uh, unless he has like a big slam. In my opinion, like him calling dives is kind of a grief. Um, because these guys do the most damage. This guy can be, like, perma-invis. So, like, sometimes he gets kicked out against, like, really hard teams. Like, like an owl is, like, really annoying. Because, like, randomly our Sombra would just get found. Just because people are good players and they're, like, fucking, like, randomly shooting and, and catch our Sombra. So, like, this guy's kind of unreliable. But at the same time, he's very reliable. Once he is in position, it's, like, obviously, it, I could be a coach and fucking call a dive for Sombra, you know? Like, <laughs> he's playing the game, like, invis, like, you know, from his own spot. Tracer's great because... Ball by himself, if he kills these guys together, then these guys just fucking suck. These guys just fucking suck dick. Like, honestly, like, you can never die to a ball solo um, as this unless you have mines or something like that. So, in general, it, like, I think it should be split, essentially 33, 33, 33. This guy's, like, you know, I think he's just, like, 15% or something like that. But in my on my teams, what I say is uh, calling is, like, a group effort. And then... Also that like I need confirmations and you guys should be looking at each other across the map. Like you guys should be aware of each other across the map. Like this is something that we've had to build synergy over time. Uh but yeah, you you really just want all of anyone to be able to call and you don't call blindly. You like ask if you don't know if the person can dive. Some people are like, "Why couldn't you dive there?" and it's like, "Oh, I was low." And I was like, "Oh, I didn't see you." That's fine. Like that's why asking is fine. Can you dive? Can you dive? Or just like being really aware. I'm like, "I see I'm full HP. I see he's full HP. We can just two man dive the Zen." right like maybe our balls kicked out that's no problem hey dive with me and that's why indie is so good and what like this is why in or sorry space is really good as a player this is why kev's really good as a player uh like bird is really good as uh, as a player they all like can do this and they all have the map awareness to do this uh to like call for each other on dives like rarely are these people just 1v6 diving if they are they're like making a huge gamble play which is fine but I think a common misconception in Overwatch is like my main tank needs to call. I think in this comp, he not that he doesn't need to call. It's just like he doesn't need it doesn't need to be like he's on Reinhardt or Monkey or something like that. Um, and he dominates the comms on this comp. I think it's like much more closer to even split. Gotcha. Thanks. Oh, and Zen can call dives too because if he gets a Discord on something, uh, you basically just did uh, 50, 60 damage to a Zen uh, because it cuts their their health by 25 percent right 25 30 i forget which it is but yeah he cuts the hp of everything so yeah and when brig has rally she can call dive mm -hmm. uh I'm, I'm down for brig calling dives as well skewed called a lot of dives on our team especially on monkey comp but yeah you can anyone can call dive gotcha thanks any other questions uh, I have one. What's the theory of Ash in this comp versus like a Sombra or Soldier? Uh, Ash is just better if it's like more open. Like uh, Sombra. Oh, uh, it's a really good question. Like basically, the more open it is, I want their comp. Uh, and by open, like open sight lines. Like think, I don't know. A really egregious example is like Havana. Like that. That's really good. Um, Junker Town A point. Like this is really good. But honestly, if it's so open, you might want to play Arissa, right? Because Ball's not as good when it's in the open. Uh, but, like, when it's open and when you have high grounds, basically. King's Row A, I imagine that something like this comp, maybe this is a Hanzo instead, is, like, quite good. Because it's hard to dive the high ground on King's Row A, right? But, and it's easy as defense to stay up on high ground. Uh, and the sightlines from high grounds are quite good. Um, so, this is more if you, like, can dive more. Uh, like, Diva and Sombra are more if you dive more and, like, want to dive more. Uh, you can cut LOSs. This one is if you, like, feel like the map is really open and you can just control the space by just, like, standing out and having your Ash go wide, taking wide angles, having your Sigma going wide and taking wide angles as well. Okay, so it turns more into, like, a three-man Sig plus supports plus Ash versus the Tracer Somber setting up for dive immediately with the Diva comp. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, though. In, in this matchup. In this matchup. Yeah.
In other matchups, it's a bit different. Like, uh, if you're against Lucio Moira, it's, yeah, a bit different. Okay, cool. Um, I want to talk about Downtown, actually. Because um, you guys didn't get to play it, but it's a good, it's a really good map um, to talk about, I think. Just, like, hypothetically. Um, oh, my God. I have to go fly over there. You know, this is how they make maps, like uh, Li Zhang or whatever. It's just like go yeah, up the Yeah, all on the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Busan, I've never actually traversed through Busan. Uh, I was like looking down like into the floor, but it turns out it was over here when I was like reviewing it. I was like, oh. Okay, on this map, on this, uh, yeah, this sub map, where would you guys want to play? Uh, or what comp would you want to play? And then how would you want to play it? Let's say I'll, I'll make their comp for you. They've been playing Ash everywhere. They're going to play Ash here. They're going to play Ash. Probably use this high ground, but I'm not sure. Uh, what comp do you guys want to play on this map, and how do you want to play it? Like, talk to me just first fight, because that's the problem that you guys had in first fight. Where's my backline going? Where's my frontline going? Uh, what comp am I playing? What are our advantages? What are our disadvantages? Let's talk through it. Uh, if we want to... Sorry, I go Yeah, go. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking here, to be honest, I would probably want to play a Diva Sombra Dive if I know that they're playing Ash, just to contest her a little bit more, because I think she wants to go to high ground. Uh, and because of that, I would just want to go back with my team, and then probably set up, probably be able to set stage for a dive on high ground. So mm. I'm a little bit iffy on this side, if we go pack, if we actually hold pack side, just because... I feel like we can kind of get barraged from high ground if we kind of like walk out, but that's my thought immediately. So you want to go Tracer Sombra and you want to dive, uh, you specifically like the Sombra is kind of hard to dive the high ground here, but you think the D.Va will be good enough, right? Yeah. Okay. And then Sombra can hold pack just in case like Ball or Tracer want to kind of hold that other side. Okay. So you want to go pack side with your backline? Um, yeah. And then, okay. Cool. And you, you expect there to be an Ash up top? I agree. I, I expect an Ash to be up top here. Or maybe here. But most likely here. Okay. When Ash is here, where where does our D.Va want to be? Like, you said our backline's over here. Let's say it's Zen, Brig, uh, not Sigma. Just Zen, Brig over here. Uh, where do you expect... Where do you want our team to be? Like, our front line to be? We established where our back line is. Where do you want our front line to be? Probably definitely on point, yeah? That's... Wait, if Ash is on the high ground? Yeah. Yeah. The Diva like and Ball like right beneath her for the commit, right? Mm, I like that. Ball, I think, can take many angles here. Like he could maybe even go around, like sorry, the cursor's not reaching, but like, you know, all the way around to coast side. Yeah. Uh I don't know I don't know all the ball rollouts, I'm gonna be honest, but I'm sure you can just swing up from here. <laughs> uh I'm assuming like they're gonna contest the alley though. But yeah, in theory. They send a three and three mids for Yali. I could take the full back route and then go for the commit with Diva once she's in position. Mm -hmm. Tracer, it's kind of hard to get up here as well. One of the reasons Ash is probably great on this map is because it's hard for our flankers to get up. Uh, but I, I like the idea. Like I'm fine playing that. But if you do it, you need to play below them. That's exactly it. This Sigma's probably playing on the window or over here. If he's playing over here, he's gonna try to like just pressure your backline. But realistically, we could look for dive on this backline. The Sombra goes all the way behind and is like calling, you know, where they're at or whatever it may be, or just you know straight up shooting the side. You know, like the Sigma's trying to enter through here. Your ball tracer or your tracer Sombra are just over here. They can get packed healed. They can't get shot from the ash above. They can't get shot from the window. They they're really pretty quite safe here. You know, like tracer can hold this off angle here. Your diva's below them here. Their Sig comes out, maybe you look for dive, or you need to, like, back up and your D.Va can eat packs or whatever. But yeah, that's how you want to split the map, is, like, they want to play open sight lines, you you play under here. Your Zen... Oh, sorry. Tracer with an orb over here holding this space. Your ball can go behind or just fight here. And then maybe you, like, go for dive, or you guys can, like, wait for point to unlock and then go down and then relook for dive as it happens. Um, so, Yeah. It's hard to talk about hypothetically because it's a lot. It's in the moment and depends on what you guys do. But the basis of the plan, plan that Prince Cat was saying is like, yep, Diva underneath here. I added a little bit. Tracer on this side with an orb. Easy. 
uh, and then you have to react to what they're doing. And your your sombra has to be either scouting or like thinking about like, oh, do I want to just like shoot SMG and just like create pressure, or do I want to like look for setup and be like, okay, yeah, yeah, we can dive the fucking window. Like my diva is just gonna go from here, swoop in, kill this sigma, boop him off, kill him. Like that's fine too. But once you have the space established, you guys as good players like will have to see the opportunity yourself on like what what they're doing basically. Uh, my question. Mm -hmm. So since they have the if they had in theory if they had the uh, Ash Sig, what are the thoughts on Widow on this move? Uh, I think the Sombra. I think Widow is kind of hard into Ball Tracer uh, in this meta. <laughs> uh, Ash is like the more flexible one. Uh, I think Hanzo is like arguably just like. The most flexible because he can like one shot things. Sonic is quite good, but I think Ash is better on this map because Bob is insane on this map. But uh, Widow is good if you have like a freak Widow, uh, is what I will say. Uh, but it's easily controllable. Like we had to practice against like Kai and like Ons, and it's super fucking annoying. These guys, uh, <laughs> like they're they're just absolute fucking freaks. And like you show your head for a second, you're dead. Like it's unquestionable. Uh, so we have to, like, find ways around it, but, like, if we force them off of it, it probably means it's, like, quite hard to play. Um, but at lower levels, like, maybe it's easier to play because uh, their ball tracer aren't hounding the Widow as much, and your team is, like, less aware of Widow and just, like, runs out uh, brain dead. so. Basically, it depends how good your Widow player is. Sorry, that's a okay, really so long way to dive answer. Comp, this ball comp would be, like, the best to take Busan if we're trying to commit to the dive portion yeah. of it. And I, I think playing the, the Sigma version is fine. I think playing the uh, D.Va version is fine. Like, that's going to be up to your guys' style, like, how aggressively you want to play. And then, like, also what your what other comps you might be playing against. If you're really expecting a lot of rush, like, playing this comp is probably a little easier, right? Because your Sigma won't get randomly, like, jumped and cold. Uh, like, <laughs> I'm sure that's happened a lot where they just jump your Sig and he's fucking dead. Uh, and then your Ash too, like, is harder to care for in the against the Lucio Moira Winston D.Va comp. Uh, so it just depends on what you guys want to run but you should just learn like one comp and learn the variations of it essentially is my suggestion because learning like many many different comps against every team is like probably too hard just learn like a style and then you can like just change one or two picks and then you're still the same comp and you guys will still have the same hero proficiency it's easier for practice too since i'm sure you guys have limited time as students to to practice that actually helps a lot thank you yep 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 Okay. Oh, we're already at 50. Fuck. <laughs> um, let's go to um, King's Row. Now entering King's Row. Ready for battle. Ready for battle. Hello. Okay. Uh, this is just for your hitscan player. Uh, you should not want to play Kree into this. It seems tempting. I think everyone gets like a hard on when they see Ball Tracer. Like they're like, oh, I want to go Ana, I want to go Kree. This is pretty wrong in general. Uh, Hanzo, like maybe you can, maybe that your Tracer player can talk to you about it. But I'm pretty sure like a good Hanzo is like threaten more threatening than a Kree. I feel like Kree is easier to play around. My my opinion. Rather than randomly getting headshot and getting sonic, like you don't hear the sonic and then you just get headshot around a corner. Uh, the constant headshot threat is really annoying. Like, uh, yeah. But versus the rest of this comp, like your your alt is not very good. I don't think Hainun's a very good alt. And then Hanzo's like constant pressure is very very good, very very good. Uh, the sniper that can move, so it's a widow one shot potential that can move, which is great. Uh, here again, the basic thing is like. You're over here. Our backline isn't even isn't even ready for this dive. I'm fine with you diving. I think it's a bad idea to like dive really fast in these comps, like this comp, uh, like the mirror comps, because like it's more about back. It's more backline focus. I would again suggest taking space. But yeah, that's like a basic mistake. I think let's ignore that. It's not a big deal. You guys go. Oh yeah, because I oh, I yeah. saw the Hondo was out of position right there. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, yeah, but in fact, it's, 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 he's not with the team, right? Yeah. yeah, he can just get orbed and packed, but yeah, I, I see your point. It's not, like I said, it's not a big deal. If you see chances to, like, on Ball and Tracer, if you guys die trying to make a play happen, you guys can just, like, figure it out yourself if it was, if it was feeding or or not. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Here, someone, I want someone to tell me what mistake you guys are making. We're just collapsed on immediately. Yeah, you guys all we went the same, the same side. 
you guys can tell the DPS, their DPS are good. They're just gonna get orb them packed from here. That's what's happening right now, and then they're just off angling your ass. At this point, we just have to explode out or take the loss and regroup. Yeah. What would you guys want? Oh, we can watch this, but uh, for those who don't remember, I'll just show it really quick. But you guys are all on the same angle. This guy's behind you. It's pretty rough. This tracer's alone. Really, like, uh, the Hanzo should have kept going wide. I think. But it doesn't matter. Okay. Let's let's go back here. Let's look at where they're standing and let's talk about where we want to go. Oh, sorry. So, our, our ball is back alive. Our tracer is dead. Let's say just off rip. Like, what do we want to do? Right here. Wh what do we want to do? Assuming we don't go for this uh, Hanzo or whatever, like, what do we want to do? Yeah, we send the ball tracer and motel and get rid of the tracer on the left side and then rotate around. Yes. Okay. There's there's like sometimes, like I said, sometimes you go fight for a space and sometimes you take the free space. So where are they stacking right now? They're stacking here and their Hanzo is off angled over here and their tracer's over here. We can push this guy out together. Pushing this guy out, we can, but then he just comes back. <laughs> he just rotates around and it's fine. For here, like this is the free side, in my opinion. This is the free side, because they see all of this. This is the free space, is what I like to call it. The free space. Sometimes you can take what you're given. Uh, for example, if the Hanzo was this side, I'd be really happy to go this side, uh, is the thing, and then have my ball tracer go under. So it really depends on where they're standing. People like think Overwatch is about like these deep, intricate strats. Sometimes it's just about seeing it and adjusting off of it. But this is what like coaches do. They they give you the concept and then, or this is what I do. I give you the concept and then you have to figure out the situation on your own. If there's Zen Hanzo was standing here, this is a fine configuration, I think. Zen Hanzo standing here, I'm actually completely fine with this because they get a control hotel and then they have like a Sigma up here or something like that. Sigma uh, alone up here or Sigma over here. The free space is now over here as well. Like you, you just need to find where the free space is, or you just need a straight up fight for the the space. And that's up to you guys. Like on this map, I would say, like we saw what happens when you go and fight for this space as six. That's no good. But maybe you just go fight as that space for two as two, and then your backline moves in this way. Maybe your ball tracer go all the way this way, and then your your backline goes this way. You guys need to figure out like what your frontline wants to do, and then what your backline wants to do. For finding the space, I would say like uh, it's up to your front line, your ball tracer, and if you play Sombra, Sombra, it's up to your front line to figure out which space is the free space, and it's up to your back line to also, like, talk about where they need to go to support our front line. Uh, you don't want your front line and back line to get too disconnected. If they can be together, it's much better. Sometimes it's not possible, but yeah, if you can, it's better. So, like, I'll just, I'll just pretend we, we went this side, our ball tracer went this side, and then our back line's, like, somewhere in hotel. What is the next step after that? They stay here, he stays here, this tracer goes back, melts back a little bit. What's the next step? Uh, put like, I guess like Sigma goes to point, like from the left side, and then uh, like force them to come to us because we have all that free space on the left. Maybe we and do the... Ball. Oh, yeah, sorry, you go. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I think it might be hard for Sigma to touch point uh, by himself because mm -hmm. uh, he's just like, if I'm them, I'm just beaming this kid. Uh, maybe we just send our Zen's over here, right? Maybe we just send our tracer to point here. He gets a orb, and then like we're pressuring point. These guys cannot see them anymore. Maybe this Hanzo can see them, and in which case, like maybe I don't send my tracer to point. Maybe maybe these guys come out and contest the Hanzo too. Like we can be creative here and just like time a pressure together, and then you guys come out. Maybe my ball tracer like wants to go under here. Ball tracer go under here, and then like. Our ball's looking for a, oops, sorry. Ball's looking for a boop slide over here, you know? These guys will react and do something, but you guys just need to make a plan. Once you're here, like, this this comp is so fast-paced because I cannot tell you where exactly they will stand. I really cannot. But maybe you, like, split, split out of here. That's fine for your backline. Maybe you just touch point. Maybe your Sigma can actually just walk up here because your ball is getting chased. Like, you know, their Briggs then go and fight our ball. Uh, that means you can go run over here. So basically, you just play numbers game and reevaluate the situation, and it's the same situation as before. What is the free space? What do I want to fight? What is the free space? What do I want to fight? What is the space that I want? This is like constantly the question you're asking in this ball comp. So step one is going to be the same as step two. It's just going to have more variables. I can make you know first fight plans or whatever, 
uh, talking about first points are really easy. And like, in fact, in Owl, like I break down, like, you know, if we're struggling through this second point choke, when the cart's over here, we talk about it too. But like, I cannot teach you guys every single point, every single thing in uh, Overwatch in one hour. I can just tell you guys this big concept and you guys will have to figure out the details, I will say. Um, and this is what review is for. You guys look at this and be like, oh, okay, ball tracer. What, should we have gone this way? Uh, it's, I'm actually looking for a slam over here. Like may, maybe it, like we go this way and then I, I go under here and then I can you know grapple up, do a quick grapple and then slam here. Like that's up to you guys to talk about as a team for what you guys wanted to do. So I think the most important thing in Overwatch is talking to your teammates and making sure you guys have a game plan. Review helps with that so that you guys are all on the same page. Uh, make sure you guys review together at six too, as much as much as you can, because um, yeah, all being together on the same page. If your Zen knows what your ball is doing, he can time his you know timing better. So he'll understand what the game plan is. Okay. Sorry, it's also hypothetical because the example like you guys just get crushed <laughs> in this in the ball. Um, yeah, it was a pretty fast game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, this is my boy Shake. He's the uh, <laughs> he's one of the coaches of Harrisburg. Uh, okay. Oh, I'm just gonna go over this last part. I actually can't go over all the stuff I wanted to go over, so that sucks. But it's fine. Uh, let's go over defense. Because I want you guys, I, I'm just digging home on like a couple of lessons and just dragging them out. Like, I, I know you guys are probably like, he's talked about this already, but I just want to make it infinitely fucking clear. Okay. What is their comp trying to do? And what is our comp? Like, what is what is their comp trying to do? And what is our win condition on our comp? I think, think starting this comp is fine. Uh, you don't know what they're going to run. You're afraid of Lucio Moira thing. This is fine. I don't really care what your starting comp is. It's a respectable comp. What is their goal? Someone tell me. They're gonna put a lot of damage, like I sand. Sand, just take yeah. space and surround. Take space, surround. They're they're like a half dive, half poke comp, right? Okay, so what the what what is your guys like? They have an advantage. What is their disadvantage? What is your advantage against them? Backlines. Backline. Suppose. I think they have a better backline. They 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 have the same backline as you. Oh, one, two, three. But they have you guys have Brig. So and Brig isn't really a backliner. Uh, you know she's like uh, she wants to connect. You guys gotta have some advantage. Talk to me here. <laughs> well, we have the bunker. They they can't commit onto us directly. Mm. They have to force us apart to commit. Okay. They have to like hard commit. Okay. The the main thing that you guys need to be thinking about doing is like starting the fight. Uh you guys know how in like I don't know, do you guys play League of Legends and someone's playing a poke comp against you? You don't just like AFK stand mid, right? Like that's pretty bad. You need to set up like something to get it going, right? Maybe you bunker for a bit, uh, and in this game you have healing, but like in League of Legends, like more times than not, you want to like not be standing still, uh, because the more that the poke comp gets, more accidents, random accidents can happen. Uh, so you actually want to play like pretty proactively. But in this game, like I like you were talking about, like uh, we can bunker, but we bunker with a purpose. We bunker with the the expectation that I need to explode out. Okay. So here, like, standing here against the spam comp is crazy. This is why Hanzo's really good on this map, Widow's really good on this map, Farah's really good. Uh, they can shoot you from fucking spawn. Uh, so as soon as you guys see poke comp, uh, I, 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 I would go to dark for my, for my Orisa. Uh, small thing is I would keep my Sigma up here as, like, solo pressure. Uh, like, up here or up here. Because you guys don't all... If you guys all go to the ground, they get their goal of surrounding you. So you have to do two things. You have to hold space... And you have to look for a rush. It sounds weird, but you have to look for a rush on a risk call. Uh, also, when you're on high lot. ground, you get boofed. Uh, you can get boofed yeah. from the thing, so it's pretty bad. So here, uh, I'm pretty sure they're just going to surround you guys. The Tracer's trying to fight for the side space, but you guys just get surrounded and die. Not that interesting. Uh... Like I said, because 
you guys played kind of badly here. Like, I'll try to give, like, a better example. Because uh, we played against a very similar comp and, like, against what I think is, like, one of the best, like, Faro Hanzo teams in the league. Maybe we'll find out. Maybe the Hunters stick to this approach, though. Is the Hunters are gonna so we're actually running, like, pretty much the same comp as you. I think Sigma was banned in this iteration, I'm pretty sure. But, like, they have a similar comp. Yes, they don't have ball, but... Oh my god, I can't pause. Uh, yes, they, they don't have ball, but it's, like, very similar in concept. This one goes to BAP. They're playing far on Mercy. They were playing far without Mercy, but similar concept. They have like way more spam than us. Our goal, our goal is actually like, one, we're not sitting on high ground because like high ground we get, we can just get poked to shit on. And two, I, I leave space up there. Like I told them to leave him up there because they can't really kick him out. Uh, he can just use the Mega himself and he's holding this side space because it's clear to me. Uh, classic King's Row. Uh, like, really classic King's Row is, like, people think Ryan is really good on King's Row. Like, Ryan sits here because he can't stand up here, right? Because he just gets booped off. Same same reason as before. And then, like, Farah Hanzo just take this angle. They just take this angle, and then what happens is they own, like, this part of the map, and then the Ryan has to rush through Hotel every time. That's why I think Poke is, like, really good on the first point of King's Row. But, like, this is, like, a classic in my opinion. That's why you leave someone up here who can, like, flank and, like, ha hold the space. So, like, the D.Va itself holds the space here. Uh, you could do this with, like, Tracer or whatever, but Tracer's, like, I want Tracer over here getting packs, if possible, because she wants to hold the space over here. If you lose, like, Plat, it's not doomed, but it's just, like, harder. Um, so if we go back to the VOD, Space tries to hold there as long as possible. I think Kev... I don't know, actually, nowhere. Oh, yeah, yeah, Kev is alley, like we talked about, yeah. And so, right now, we can just, like, 2v1 kill this Mercy some of the times. Uh, we've done that in scrims. But these guys are a little bit better than the NA teams we were playing against. But they have less space to dive from. Still, we're grouped up. Like, four of us are grouped up. Space couldn't hold that, that angle the entire time. But right now, look, Bert, I don't know if you saw, but Bird Ring's actually looking to flank around. Because we're, we're setting up our rush. We're setting up our rush. This is an angle for a rush right now. And... Again, this POV is hard to see, but like we timed this push. This was a push we're doing. Bird Ring is only showing as soon as our backline or as soon as the rest of our team pushes through hotel. Pushing through hotel, we have to we have to cut the distance, right? We know we're just sitting below below Afara, and then we know their backline. Their Ana has to be. Uh, you guys can see my mouse, right? You, she has to be towards this way. There's no way she's anywhere but that way. So we have to go and connect. We have to go and connect. We have a brig. They have like more spam than us. We have to go and connect. We have to make value out of our brig. This is why we were such like gladiators were such a good brig team is because we knew how to connect our brig. But again, bird ring dies. It's no problem because we killed the during this entire time we were killing the rest of them. You know. And we set up angles for our dive. Like because bird ring gets that one 125 shot on mercy. It's not that hard to hit mercy as Hanzo if she doesn't know where you're at. Um. And yeah, we we just like look for a dive. <laughs> Again, we found the difference in our comp. So that's the thing that I want you guys to focus on. Because I can tell you guys struggle with that. Because you guys are playing random ass comps on like every map as far as I'm concerned. Uh, <laughs> like, I was watching your guys' Li Zhang versus... Uh, I don't know. It was in the like actual the YouTube VOD. Uh, and you guys are running like Hog Sig Lucio or something like that. And uh, I like literally don't know what the fuck is going on. Like, I don't know what you guys think your win condition is. You guys just kind of like are better individually, which is fine, but it won't it won't win you guys versus better teams. Um, I forgot if there was a second clip. This is my, maybe my bad for not remembering. No, I don't think this is that interesting. We're just like, yeah, it, uh, we just we just engage. It's it's no no big deal. But yeah, really on these first fights, try like these first fights is really important because it snowballs the rest of the map. But you need to find your advantage. You need to find your advantage in your comp. Think about their their disadvantages, yeah, or think about their advantages, but that means you, that, that makes it clear what you need to do as well. They're heavy on poke. What do you do against poke in every game? Uh, you, you rush it. You have to find a way to, like, dive them, basically. You have to find a way to kill, kill them uh, so that they don't keep poking your asshole, you know? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sorry, if you have time, could I ask a quick question? Yeah, yeah, we're a little over, but no worries. Uh, uh, I'll just leave it open to uh, questions right now. Okay, uh, so on the King's Row, uh, there was on our uh, King's Row against HU, there was one part where we actually got a pick, and um, I think it was like 220 or something. Yeah, it was on the Hanzo, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we got some kind of pick, and then like they knew how to disengage, 
and like we kind of got like their Hanzo was behind us, and then their Sig was in the room, and then their Brig and Ball like backed up, and then we just completely lost uh, the advantage that we had because we just didn't like I guess capitalize on the pick that we had. Yeah, I think they're just holding space. I don't think they're disengaging at all. It looks like they're straight up fighting you guys. I think you have the wrong timestamp. I can find it one okay, second. Okay, yeah, yeah. Let me know. It was... Uh, I think 405, actually. Oh, wait, no, 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 not 405, sorry. Uh, God, where was this? I mean, that one was the same thing. They just fought. I, I think you should... Like, if you're 5 I think, six, I think you guys should just fight. What, which one? Sorry. Yeah, 405 is 405. Yeah, let's see the setup for this fight. Oh, is it before this or still after? No, it's like, uh, like as this is happening. So I think we're up here or we have some kind, some kind of advantage here. Okay, and see. then, like, Johanzo's behind us. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's watch from the very beginning. Sorry. Uh, I just don't know what the fuck is happening. <laughs> okay, so it's some crazy stagger fight, I guess. Oh, that was a good play by your Kree. If you guys went together, it would have been better. They trance. They trance. What's the numbers right now? Five. Okay. Five v four. Here we train, there's a Hanzo behind us, and there's Sig is holding the room. Oh. And then, like, we kind of we kind of spread out. We don't, we don't have, like, a single target. Oh. Um, so, the big problem is, uh, the, okay, the safest spot you're going to be as Zen Brig is in a tiny room. Every single time, you're going to be safest inside a tiny room. Uh, Zen is really good in tiny rooms. He can just, like, run backwards. After your trance, uh, this is, like, a thing that we've told Shu, but it's, like, very intuitive. After your trance, you should find... You and your break should be talking about where you guys want to end up. Maybe you end up over here. That's fine. Like, in different situations, it's different things. But you should end up... Like, I'm pretty sure you should be just be following the trance here. Just running them down. And then you end up back here. Uh, Because here you just, like, end up, like... They're still just looking for the dive uh, here, and you're like, n we're like not aware. Basically, uh, getting your backline traded is like the main way that a team that's disadvantaged will win. They just make a crazy play on your backline, but this isn't even a crazy play. Y you're you're basically standing still. So, uh. yeah. And then uh, here, uh, like our Kree goes back to get the Hanzo, and then our tracers diving the ball, and Sig and Brig are just holding the point. Yeah. It's kind of like. Should we have picked the sing single target, and which one would have been, like, what was the correct way to um, go about this? Yeah, okay. so the correct way to go about it, I mean, so you just die here, right? Like, this isn't that interesting, just was mechanic, right? Yeah, like, I saw the brig was alone, and uh, I saw my ball is coming with me to kill the brig. Yeah. But I didn't realize, yeah. See, okay. Yeah, we definitely need some more communication, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, I don't know. Like, the the Tracer can go and try to kill this Brig. I think it's fine. He just gets one shot, and, like, it's kind of unlucky, because he's not expecting a ball thing. Like, shit, shit just happens in this comp for the Tracer dying. The Hanzo killing things is the mo more concerning part, I think. Because uh, I, I think this is fine. Like, he gets booped into a bash, and then gets one shot. Because uh, I don't think you were trying to commit here. You you I saw. I thought you blinked into this Brig and bag bashed and killed yourself but you you literally got booped in. Yeah, yeah so it's it's like fine like or like not fine but it's just like i, th I think that's just like overwatch shit like that's unlucky <laughs> uh yeah. i think the main thing is that your zen regroups and finds this thing you guys are aware of this hanzo on statue like literally no one was aware of this hanzo on statue even though he was here like the entire fight uh i think and then like if the hanzo clutches out and kills you guys even though you are aware of him then he's just a god like there's not much to do about it but he, he's like separated from his entire team. He has no Zen. He has no Brig. I'm pretty sure you guys killed this guy as long as you guys are like individually aware. Because he's been standing on the statue this entire time. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, basically, he he was shooting my Brig, so the call was Hanzo was blind. So I I went to walk at him, and he just he just one tapped me when he climbed over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the Zen Brig just needed to like find the room so that they Zen Zen needs to like after the trance find find the space that he wants to end up with because you have speed boost when you have trance. 
find the space. Like, I literally think you could, like, zen over here, run out there zen, and then end up over here. Like, you can get creative with it. It doesn't, like, if you have that much of an advantage. Like, let me watch. Okay, your flux. Right here, I'm pretty sure you just go into this room and then you try to kill the zen from the backside. Uh, rotate around, and then you're safe from the Hanzo and the ball as well. Yeah, I, th this is like 100% the move, actually. I'm like... I, I hate to say when things are 100%, but this is like super, like, super clear to me. You just come over here, uh, you kill the zen. And then your Briggs like carrying behind, or like so someone's like aware of the Hanzo. I, they're like when I say aware, like I'm not sure what you should do about the Hanzo necessarily. Pretty sure you just leave him because he's alone, and then these guys killed the the backline, and then you guys come and kill the Hanzo later. As long as you're aware, like like I said, unless he gets like a crazy like, crazy like three shots on your team, you should not. Uh, do anything. And uh, the, their Sig was holding the room. Do we just like? Let him be there, or like, should we like all make a call? Like, oh, go for Sig. Wasn't Sig, Sig here? Oh, you want you want to yeah. go here? Yeah, like, was that an option too, or is that just kind of like just poke him out until he goes away and we cap point? I, like, I think ideally. this guy's bait. Uh, I think this guy's bait. Uh, because there's a yeah. <laughs> there's a Hanzo behind, Ooh, and then your front line's over here. You should be pushing uh literally anything else. Uh, okay. Yeah. Th this is like really. Uh, I hate to say it, but like in in this comp, it's like a lot of individual skill. Like this Hanzo behind is like disastrous for you guys, and and like I think our backline going for their backline is, or sorry, our frontline going for their backline is good. But like the fact that everyone else ignored this Hanzo is like, uh yeah. that's just like individual skill. <laughs> like that no one recognized that this was like the most important thing to to care for. You know, like um, yeah, that's true. If, if there was a Cree hiding in statue, like or if there was a Cree in statue, I'm pretty sure you guys would have gone for the Hanzo. Or would have gone for the Kree too. Like that's just, that's just like literally up to you guys in the game. Like these mid fight stuff is uh, yeah, I I can't really teach it. You know, like uh, nice. there there are some principles where it's like you know after after a jump we regroup, but those are like concepts. Here it's I don't think this is any concept. It's like uh end end your chance in a good spot. That's like a that's a concept. But like you know being aware of a, a Hanzo and like how to play against it. Like if this was a Widow too, I I'd kind of have the same expectation that. You guys would be aware of this widow and not stand out in front of the open against the widow. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry if that was a bit crass, but it's just. Uh, no, 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 it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good. It was good. Oh yeah, I got uh, another question. Yeah, go for it. Oh yeah, I saw I saw chaser players. So, uh, what's the most important thing that I do? Ooh, great question. Uh, okay. Uh, or like DPS player, yeah. Yeah, for you as Tracer, like, I think you should be trying to, like, something I tried to get Kev to do, because Kev was, like, I don't know if you guys know Kev, sir, he's, like, kind of a silent, quiet boy, at least when we first got him, uh, and he's still a silent, quiet boy, like, just to be honest, but, like, getting him to, like, command the team around, get, get like, the same, get him on the same page, because the way I see this comp is actually, like, these guys are your, like, mechanical carries, and then, obviously, if this guy's on hitscan, he's, like, the mechanical carry. Like, we need to play around this guy, like, uh, especially because he's, like, the biggest space taker. This guy helps him out in, like, the strategy part. Like, at least on our team, it was the case. But, like, the smarter you are on, like, what space you want to hold, and the more commanding you are, like, take this side with me, the more impact you're individually going to have as a player. Uh, and, like, there's a bunch of, like, mechanical stuff, I'm sure, but that that's not, like, l what I look to improve, because I just assume Kev is, like, the, like, he will know more about Tracer than me, like, on the details, but, like, I just try to get people on the same page as, like, I try to get Kev to be smarter and, like, take the right space and, like, uh, be able to communicate that to the team, basically. Uh, even if he's wrong, it's, like, a learning process, and, like, when you start shot calling more, in general, like, you're gonna be wrong sometimes, but that's okay, like, I don't think anyone minds if you shot call and you're wrong, because, like, everyone knows that you just have to, like, choose something and why not choose this thing and you'll just improve on it, right? Like, there's no way you can be 100% correct. So that's the thing that I would tell you from, like, just a general perspective to get better on. I think mechanics are obviously super important on Tracer. You can't be a very good Tracer unless you're good mechanically. I don't really care how yeah. smart you are. But, yeah, that's, like, a thing I can't really help you with. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, and uh, should I, like, do more on the front line or should I, like, go to, like, the... Like the side angle to take space, or I would always take the side angles, but from the side angles, always, you can yeah. shoot to you can shoot tanks or you can look for dive. It depends how good your dive angle is, to be honest. For example, on this map, if their backline's sitting here, um, it's pretty hard yeah. for you to dive. Like your dive angles are pretty dog shit. I think here, yes, here, like 
it's pretty bad. Like you have to find like crazy ways to go there. So like per map, per situation, per team, you're you're gonna have to figure out. Oh, am I better off like you know just holding space? Like, do I want to just hold space, or am I like looking to just like triple blink past the dive? You know, like, or am I just like looking to fight the sides? But you're almost always, in my opinion, you're almost always fighting the sides. But whether or not you're shooting their front line and stopping their dive by shooting their front line, that's like one way you can protect your back line, right? Is by if you stop their yeah, dive. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that that's one way. Or you can. You can just like look for dive in general like it's up to you but yeah it, it's really stylistically what your team wants to do um okay. and yeah like if we were somber tracer i would tell you to look for dives more because uh against their comp their win condition is like have a stronger back line so that means they have weaker side fight which means like we need to like dive their back line a lot of the times like that's the basic idea uh, but it's not a hundred percent of the time you know like these guys are up here it's gonna be yeah, yeah. impossible force point Shoot, shoot out the ball, ask for orb, uh, and then, you know, go from there. Mid-fight, you can call for dives whenever. Okay, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Whew. Any other questions? About, like, you can have individual questions, like, what is my role, if I didn't, like, explain it very well, too. Because I <laughs> went more into, like, team concepts and stuff. Um, I guess I would ask, um, like, what would, what would, what is like Sigma's role, like in the ball comp, ball zen comp? Like, what are you? Are you just like shielding and providing space, or is there like any active, or is it more passive, just sitting? Yeah, yours is like, um, you have to like have the best, in my opinion. Like, the off tank is like one of the hardest roles, and like, this is why I think like Vo Void is like the best off tank in the entire world for sure. Like. Uh. Uh, like, he is, like, insane, because he has, just has insane awareness of what's going on, and you know that push and pull, the numbers game thing I was talking about? He's a master at that, and he knows which space to control. Like, he will naturally take really good uh, positions on Sigma. I can find an example for you. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Like, this isn't an Orisa comp, but, like, the concept is still the same, of, like, you should be really trying to greed how... Um, Sorry, let me try to find the timestamp 345. Uh, you should be really greeting your, like, maximum value. Like, and maybe you'll feed sometimes. Like, space feeds a lot, but he, like, learns a lot from it. Here, when you're retaking, your best angle is from here. I'm, like, certain your best angle is from here. Uh, if you're fighting around this corner, if you guys think the cart... This was something I was going to review. If you think the cart's going to end up here, the fight's going to happen here, uh, and your risk can push from here, I'd put my Sigma here. And then I'm shitting on them from the back. Like, I don't want to be stacked up on my Orisa unless I'm protecting him from, like, a window or something like that. Uh, and even then, like, if I have Trance, like, I'm fine off-angling, especially if I have Alt or something. But I want to off-angle uh, and find, like, the, my most individual value here. And, like, for me, that's you over here. Or you guys letting them in and, like, playing the card here and then your Sigma over here instead. Uh, but you should play, like, Greedy. You uh, Right now, I kind of... I think this is a problem with NA. Everyone just groups up and runs at each other. Because uh, <laughs> everyone plays break map and then they just run it down. But, like, on Sigma especially, you should be thinking, like, always, what is the best space I can hold? Especially when you got ball, because you don't have to care for an Orisa. Like, sometimes you have to care for Orisa, and that's fine. Or sometimes you guys just rally in, and that's fine, too. Like, you don't... You can go with the group sometimes. But, mm. um, like, you should be thinking, like, this is my best space. I'm going to Sig Flux here and then end up on their backside. And then I'm fucking them from here. Voids ended up here before. On third point, like my Arissa, my Arissa holds here. I'm holding this. Um, there's a third point snowball where you guys should have gone. Okay, switch hog here so you're you guys are cool. <laughs> if you go hog. Yes. Yeah. I I Wait, I actually think I remember this call, yeah. <laughs> The, okay. the call was, guys, I'm getting creative. <laughs> I, I, guys, I'm throwing or something. Yeah, I think the hog for us as a team is kind of like a bit of me, a... I think I switched. Yeah, okay. It's a bit of a meme, you know. <laughs> Here, what is, what is the space that you actually want to take away from them or that you have the best angle for? Um, I guess the, the closer to the spawn. Over here? You want to be like here? This is kind of dangerous because they could pop out of this door. If there's no one on this side, maybe it's good. I agree. Oh, no, 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 sorry, on the left side, I'm in. Left like, side. Yeah, Boom, here. And you come with, like, a Zen, you come with a Hanzo, something like this. You're fucking them from here. He's fucking them from here. Your your Kree can go wide here. They, they're stuck in a corner, right? Like, this is your maximum value over here. And let's say, like, they, they're bunkered up over here. I would just fucking Sig Flux, end up above them, and then from here, I just drop and then rush them and kill them. Like, 3-2-1 with my Orisa and rush and kill them. Like, that's my whole, like, game plan on this third part of the map. 
uh, is to like take position, take position. Uh, especially when you guys are snowballing, and especially yeah, and the Arisa versus Arisa comp. This is the stuff I was usually, gonna go over uh, before or after. Sorry, but yeah. And usually, like one DPS comes with me as I try to be greedy, right? Yeah, or yeah. You need, you need so support, right? Like you never want to be one v six, and uh, in the ball comp, you are like more like you're more the tank that they're following some of the times, but sometimes you're not. Like the Zen finds his own angle, the Brick finds his own angle. Like yeah. Um, I'm totally fine if, like, Zen Briggs start on the floor on A point with Hanzo down here. Or, like, Zen's up here, Briggs over here, Brig Hanzo over here, and then, like, my Sigma's up here. Like, I'm totally fine with this configuration because you guys are taking wider space. Yeah, you're more diveable, but you guys, like, adjust to the team or whatever. Like, you can be greedy up here and then you back up and then you absorb pressure. This is what the numbers game, the numbers game and the map awareness. You give up more pressure and then you take... You realize, oh, my ball has aggro. Now I'm pushing in. Now I'm pushing in. So your role, like... The main thing about your role is figuring out the numbers game and then figuring out what positions to hold as Sigma, especially. That's gotcha. something like other people can tell you what to do, but it, it's kind of hard. Like it's better if you you figure it out yourself. I see. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, yes. oh. uh I guess something kind of quick, maybe on DPS, just because. Mm -hmm. So both me and Lan, so we're both our DPS players, basically starting always. Um, historically, at least in all of the matches we've like really tried to take seriously, it's almost always one of us on Chaser, and then the other is flexing. Oh. Um, oh, something. So two two actual separate questions. So I'll actually start with this one. Is uh, I tend to be a lot more vocal on the Chaser, so. Like, that's just because that's kind of, like, what my role ends up being. Um, but I'm not afraid to admit, like, Lan is, like, light years ahead of me, just better mechanically on the Tracer. Mm -hmm. um, so, just in, in your eyes, kind of, like, taking that... Like, I, I'll say the comparison, if you want, like, like I don't know, like, a rank who number should, who in should be playing Tracer? comparison. Is this the question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, basically. Yeah, the the answer is always the, the better Tracer. I, I always want mechanics first. <laughs> uh, Got it. Because you can't replace skill. Like, if you do 50 less damage to a support because you don't know how to blank melee and then your aim's slightly worse, uh, that's realistic, right? 50 less damage. That's the difference between winning and losing a fight. Uh, and if someone doesn't talk as much, I think that's fine. It, it just means, like, you guys have to, like, literally look at him a little bit more and ask him to talk more. Like, um, th that's something I he was kind of asking, and it seems like, you know, well, you guys don't seem, like, stubborn or unwilling to learn either. So, like, it's just something, like, maybe he's not, like, perfectly good at at the beginning, but you, you like, got to learn to grow it. Uh like, I would never replace Kevster on Tracer just because he's, like, not talking as much. Uh, yeah, it, it's too much of a grief on, like, the overall skill cap of our team. And there are just ways it. around it as well. Uh, if you are very vocal, like, maybe Sombra is a good fit for you. You know, like, Sombra can do similar things as Tracer, uh, like, in terms of setting up the, the fights and whatnot. So mm -hmm. that's, a, that's an alternative, especially if you guys want to play more divey, more, like... Uh, more aggressively essentially then that's fine too um but you you can be vocal on any hero and it's good you know you can see mm -hmm. okay other people what to do sorry you had a second question no i think i think that gets my second question yeah okay yeah there's one thing in this game that i cannot replace i can coach a lot of things but individual skill i can only improve like maybe 200 sr like at, at like the top level like it gets harder and harder to get those gains like you as a player, uh, like even my own players, like I'm teaching them team concepts and how to work together, and that will make them better players for sure. But like, the I cannot teach someone really how to get better aim <laughs> or like see a situation better and like you know make a better move. Like that's what my players got paid the big bucks for, you know. <laughs> that's why uh, you hire you hire good players and like coaches come second a lot of the times. Uh, yeah, I see. Okay. Um, any other questions? Okay, cool. Uh, sorry, I couldn't go through, uh, more with you guys. Uh, yeah, I, I guess the hypotheticals, I was just trying to be, like, clear on the maps that you wanted to improve on and the situations you want to improve on, because I know Harrisburg is more interesting than, say, these guys. No, the theory helped a yeah, lot. We were looking yeah, at a lot of uh, interesting knowledge and just like general game plan around helpful. our ball. Yeah, we're, we're just quiet, I, think we I guess. I don't know. Definitely help us very, spot and like, do scrims over very it. Helpful stuff. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. It's just sometimes I know with theory, it's like it's harder to visualize. Hopefully, I was bringing up examples that you could see or drawings that you could see. So normally, I like to work off the VOD. It was just a little hard this time. Okay. No, cool. it helped a lot. Oh, yeah. I, I got yeah. one last question. Go for it. 
Oh yeah, if they if the enemy team around like Lucio more like six man and what should we like play against? Ah, general general idea. I, I, there's like a lot of specifics to it, but general idea. There's this yeah. misconception that you actually want to shoot the monkey, and you do want to shoot the monkey so that he doesn't dive your face. But if they're really good, like let me give an example. Like teams will just like be really good at pathing, and you can't always shoot the monkey, right? Like they'll go this way. You can't really punish. Uh, they'll go this way, yeah. and then they pick around this way, and then they like you know jump under here, all shift under here, and then they're over here, and then you're like Zen's like, what the fuck? They're so close. He backs up to here. Like, I think that there's this overemphasis of trying to kill monkey. You want to pressure. If there's nothing else to shoot, shoot the monkey. But on these backline dives, I'll try to find an example. Actually, um, I have a. It's like a general idea because it's not going to be a perfect Traveling example, but. Power. Ready um they they will have their own tail because their moira can't catch up to the monkey without pressing shift and after she's no shift she is really fucking killable so you actually want to look to kill their back line uh like Ready make them traverse battle. a lot make them travel a long distance make them jump from like far away and just fight and when you guys have support alts do not run away uh i i hate when people play zen and they just start running away and they're like play distance play distance play distance that's what you do in like one of the first couple fights but every other fight you just fucking fight you just fucking fight with your zen <laughs> find a place stand your ground fight because they're gonna out rotate you uh th here's the concept um, wait, these guys fuck up this sim still has tp for spawn she should have tp to run at you guys i i i don't know how this isn't like basic uh but yeah i, I don't know whatever it's really good. So like, they're, they're running at you here. Imagine the Winston jumps you here. What you're actually looking for during this time is your ball is looking to roll through, like boop them away, or just kill the BAP. And in this case, it could be the Moira instead, right? Yes, you can focus on the Rhine, but what I want to do is just rely on my backline to kill the Rhine and then like have one or like both of my survive, uh, both of my backline survive. But I'm looking to kill the BAP in these situations. I'm not actually like, they have to walk from here to here. There's no fucking way they do that right they can sit on point sure but if they're rotating from here to here with their back line you guys have royally fucked up if you're only looking at ryan and the same principle goes for winston your winston jumps you look for boop you look for slam but you're mostly looking for the moira actually like yes pre-fight you're looking to spam the ryan yes pre-fight you're looking to just spam whatever you can right like that that's great but here a lot of times like i want to be going after this this bap i want to be going after this bap a lot of the times I think the Doomfist priority is, like, fine as well, but, like, that's the main thing. Because you guys saw this BAP. He traveled from here to here. Obviously, Mora is going to be a little bit faster. But, like, with no shift, she's equally, if not easier to kill. Because uh, she doesn't even have Lamp. Or she might have self-heal, but, like, it might get eaten uh, by your own D.Va or whatever. So, the main concept is, like, don't be too afraid. If you have no ults, uh, you can be afraid. But, like, at some point, you just fight. Your backline... Figure out a way to survive yourself, but I'm not focusing on like my back line. My front line is focusing on killing their guys. My front line pre fight is looking to spam, 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 poke, 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 sure. But then we're looking to pressure, like, we want to kill the Lucio, we want to kill the Moira. Once the Lucio and Moira are dead, uh, let me like write out the comp it's Winston, Diva, Tracer, Reaper. Like, these guys cannot survive. Like, Winston with no healing is actually the most dog shit hero in the game. Try playing Winston in DM, he's just actually like awful, right? Like, with no healing. <laughs> like in these skirmishes like let's say your backline dies like your zen brig get cut their their lucio moira get cut or get killed sorry like you guys will win the 4v4 so um yeah and don't be afraid to fight with rally and zen and just go first don't don't let these guys go first on you so often uh find a way to go first uh with your with your comp either just by positioning really aggro or like choosing to fight fairly early your ball will need to figure out details on like when to boot people back versus like uh, his slam spots and stuff. Uh, but that's like kind of on him individually to like figure out like how fast they're rushing and like don't get my my slam baited. For example, here like uh, again something I was gonna go over, but you like slam, but like there's no purpose to it. You actually just need to wait for them to rush uh, during this time. Like it's their turn right now. Um, and this might happen sometimes, but every time that you like, you know, roll through or use a slam or use cooldowns, the, after they do that, it's it's their turn to go in. Luckily, like you kind of just got boofed up, or I don't know. Ball ball mechanics are weird, but yeah. Uh, also, this comp can't kill ball, so that's why it's really good. You have three divers that are like insane. Ball, tracer, and potentially sombra are all like insane at killing things because 
Yeah, ball can't die to a Lucio Moira. Like, they do tickle damage to you. And they can't block your shield. Uh, shield charge. I see. So just target selection with the Sigma ball Zen works against six man. Just like out rotate, out uh, cooldown, stuff like that. Uh, I think don't rotate, stand stand and fight a lot of the times. Sometimes you need to rotate, but uh, if you can stand and fight, if your Zen can shoot, it, it's a good enough spot. If yeah. your Zen can uh, shoot, I mean, you like, get this card. Like ball rotating as in like if they rush us, like ball has to roll in and like roll oh, okay, go got to it. their back line. Yeah, disorient them kind of thing. Yep. Um, so specifically against like a death ball or a six man running at your face, ball is just looking for disruption on the engage and then the counter engage once we have the space back. And then die he's looking to kill the supports. He's looking to kill the supports. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Lucio is also like surprisingly easy to kill because when Lucio runs out into the open, a lot of time you're playing out in the open, he has no walls to climb. So he's actually just like a, yeah, he's like fairly easy to kill a lot of the time. So, uh, People think Lucio Mora is really hard to kill, but if, if you... If, this scales with uh, skill as well, because, like, <laughs> a tracer that knows how to, like, clip, like, just has better, like, aim. Uh, it's really hard to kill at low level, because, like, you know, passive healing just does a ton at low level. But, yeah, target target selection is, like, kind of important, and just, like, individual mechanics is really important. But, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any last questions? I got one more, I guess. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> you guys said it, it, I got no, no, one no. More, it's like a, it's kind times? of like um, it's just like uh, <laughs> like if we were to do a scrim like tomorrow, like what would be like the top three things we should focus on for it? Um, the top thing, uh, I mean, the top thing that I would focus on. If you guys are, it's different against different comps, but basically, what I want to look for is like. If you guys are playing versus any dive comp, I want you guys to be talking about like what space you want to control. This is important, like pretty much in every comp, what space you want to control. Uh, and then if you're playing against a dive comp, I want you guys to be thinking about the numbers game. The numbers game is like really, really important. And then the timing with the numbers game. So numbers game is just awareness. You actually need to be. The next thing is you need to be in position to actually like. If my ball tracer are like fighting over here. My, my Zen Sig whatever, my Zen Sig Brig should be ready to fight over here. If I'm over here and I'm aware of the numbers, that's good. But I'm not ready to actually pressure at the same time as my Ball and Tracer. Uh, so those are the three things I'd focus on. Okay, that helps a lot. Thank numbers you. game, timing, and uh, what space do you want to take? Sorry, mm. just to recap. Okay, I'm not even going to ask one more question. You guys will come up with <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough.